Now we're going to talk about the fitting of the orthotic based on the evaluation. Again, the evaluation gives us guidelines to go by. For example, we saw that the alignment in the rear foot was off. It seemed to have a little bit excessive eversion of the calcaneus on both sides in relationship to the lower leg. So I can make a correction to that, or I can adjust that somewhat, that posture, by adding a wedge. And you can see this is a wedge, a little thicker on the inside as opposed to the outside here. And we put on a overpronator where we want to control that amount of eversion, we put it on the inside of the orthotic, right? The wedge is on the inside of the, or the medial side of the orthotic device. And these uh, stick very well. They're self-adhesive, so you don't have to worry about glue. Uh, and you just peel this off and uh, stick it to the bottom of the shoe. I mean the orthotic right here, okay, right? Now, I like just trimming off that little edge. Most patients complain about that going into the arch. Okay, so I'm gonna just trim that off, okay? Now I have a nice rear foot, a varus post. Okay, so that's one done. I'm gonna take this other wedge and do the same thing. Kind of trim this off here. I do have a grinder in there that we can also use to kind of grind off any kind of a, a point that the patient might feel when, she, when they stand up on the orthotic, which we'll see. Now, the other thing, because of the forefoot instability, we could make a forefoot post uh, out of these, which is fairly simple. You just cut off the with the end of this here, right? And we put it right on the forefoot piece. Okay, but I'm gonna wait till I get uh, Georgiana back out here to uh, determine exactly where to put that forefoot uh, post by looking at her, her feet again. Okay, so we can add a forefoot post. I think, actually, I think for this particular case, like I said to you before, I like to kind of gradually build up the orthotic this is what I could possibly do with her uh, to put a four-foot wedge underneath the metatarsal. The first ray is where it, it builds up the most. Again, a, an, a, again a, a varus post, right? So we could do that. And again, now the foot is going to sit in a much better position, which we'll show in a minute. Okay? Okay, now we have my patient back, Georgiana. And uh, you can see she's standing in the orthotics here with the rear foot wedge. Uh, the varus wedge, again, uh, not valgus in this particular case because it's over pronation we're trying to control, so it's a varus wedge. And uh, you can see this is much better alignment, right, with the calcaneus lined up to the lower limb. So we've taken it out. Just step out of these again, Georgiana, and stand there without them in there. Now stand them. Move up just a tad here. Now you can see, you see how that goes back to that valgus position of the calcaneus, everted position. And again, we put them, we step on them again. This is again, a, not a great representation. Just get your foot on that. Because you do have, you do have the shoe here, you know, with the counter that holds it in that position too. Uh, so there's three parts to an orthotic. The shoe is a very important part. You need a deep heel seat in the shoe, right? A nice deep heel seat. You need a wide toe box to accommodate the orthotic if we do a four foot post. And of course you need, uh, it needs to be rather roomy in there to fit the orthotic and the foot in at the same time. So you have three components to an orthotic, the shoe, the foot, and the orthotic device is the three components. But you can see already she looks better in these than uh, she did just bare feet. So what are we doing? We're trying to reposition a better posture of the rear foot which the rear foot does control, remember those torsional movements, it's a torque converter from the low back to the hip, femur, tibia, and it converts it to three body plane movements in the subtalar joint. And that's what we're trying to control somewhat with the rear foot posting. Now it doesn't need a large amount of control, that's been in my experience. And we can, and again, we, we get great results seemingly with that. Now have a seat right here, Georgiana. And we're going to now uh, demonstrate the forefoot post, if I need that. I usually just go, sometimes with just the orthotic itself, although on her she's pretty overpronating and uh, collapsed foot. So I, I would definitely add a rear foot post to start. That's what I love about these, uh, this product, is I can start with a rear foot post. I can uh, heat them up, 
We know that she wears them. She comes back in a, in a week uh, or 10 days and says to me, you know, my, my pain is just about gone. It's not completely gone. Well, then maybe I might do a four-foot post, okay, which I'm going to demonstrate here. Uh, but again, we want to look at the four-foot wedge. Again, I want to do a varus wedge in the four-foot, just like a varus post or a medial post in the rear foot. And I want that to be right underneath the metatarsal head. So let's take this one here. We're going to show this. Uh, so here's the orthotic, and I want that post right here, underneath the metatarsal head, right there, okay? So that's where I'm going to stick the, uh, the post on medially for a four-foot varus wedge. And that's going to really control the pronation uh, throughout the stance phase, okay? So just like that. Although I'm not going to do that yet with her. We're going to put them in the shoes, and I already pre-cut them. Remember, you take the inner sole out, right, and th that's your mold. That's your pattern. You're going to cut the orthotic to the inner sole, not to her feet, because the inner sole is to the full length of the shoe, and that's what the orthotic needs to be, to the full length of the shoe so it doesn't slip in the shoe as she runs or walks. It's, it's almost like dentures. You know, they're right, molded right to the foot. They don't move. That's what you want this right into the, into the shoe. Again, there's three components to an orthotic. The foot, the orthotic, and the shoe. We need a nice deep heel seat with a strong counter because, again, it's going, to it's going to also, with the deep heel seat, or the orthotic has a deep heel seat, the shoe needs to be sit, the orthotic needs to sit in there in the shoe because so, I'm lifting it up a little bit like a heel lift, right? If I had a heel lift, too. Uh, you don't want it popping out, the heel popping out. So the heel, heel needs to be kind of deep. So the orthotic fits in there, a nice deep heel seat in the orthotic, helps to control some pronation and supination of the calcaneus too, some inversion, eversion. Plus my wedge, you need to have a wide toe box in the forefoot, enough room for your foot, the orthotic, to fit in there. And especially if I put a forefoot post, then it's really going to squash. We don't want it squash, pushing the toes up against the shoe and causing irritation on that first metatarsal. And, uh, of course, we don't, we don't want the toes squashed in there either. So there has to be a wide toe box, enough room in there for that to occur. So I'm going to then put them on the heating device, right, and we're going to heat them up. Put this in there too. One of the things you want to be careful about is how you put them in. You don't want to put them in sideways. You want to be really careful and slip them in. I, sometimes I even emphasize pushing them a little this way and then down into the shoe. Nice, good fit. Right, it's not loose, it's snug in there. Right, and we put them on this and we go ahead and heat them up for three minutes, take them out, and then she tries them on and walks around with them. Okay, so we fitted the orthotic, we made the posts, we put them in the shoes, we heated them up, and now Georgia has them in her shoes. What, she, what do you think? How do they feel? You've walked around a little bit, right? They feel great, different, but I feel much more stable. I there you it. go, that's a good comment. They feel comfortable? Very comfortable. Comfortable is the key word I want to hear, right? I mean, the, the, what, what she said was good. They feel great. They feel more stable. Uh, but comfortable is key, right? Because if they're not comfortable, the patient won't wear them. And if the patient doesn't wear them, guess what? They're not going to work. Now, what I can do when she comes back, say, in 10 days, because I'd like to see her 10 days, two weeks max, or sooner, if she thinks that they're not working as well as we thought they would, say, you know, my pain is 50% gone. That's not acceptable for me. She comes back sooner than 10 days, and we make what? An adjustment. We add more support. Maybe we'll add that four-foot post, which I showed you. We reheat them, remold them, new posture of the foot, and again, I find that to make this product superior to anything else that I've used before, and uh, I get great results with it. Orthotic Fitting Review 1. Fitting. Use thermoforming to custom mold the form orthotics to the foot and to the footwear. Two. Break-in period. Allow three to seven days for the patient's body to adapt to the therapy. Three, rear foot adjustment. The rear foot is adjusted by functional posting. Four, forefoot adjustment. The forefoot is also adjusted by functional posting. Five, in-shoe testing. Assess the functional effects of the formthotics in the shoes. Six, ongoing adjustment. Check and modify at three to six month intervals.